What is up guys? Welcome back for another episode of GOT Showcase. Today we have a team that I really really like from the GOT. We actually placed them second in power rankings and that is the Tennessee Tynamos coached by Ethan or Redithan. Please check them out in the description down below guys as well as Rob from the previous episode and any other of the coaches or teams that we cover on any one of these episodes. So as you can see Ethan has a Jirachi, Keldeo, Haxorus, Whimsicott, uh, Mega Mega Turkey, Mega <laughs> Mega Pidgeot, uh, Magneton, and he also has a Pillow Swine, which we did not bring. So that is going to be the team. Let's see if we can get a couple of wins with this. We're going to hop right into it. My intros are way too long for these things, but like I said, guys, definitely go check out Ethan in the description. Uh, also, if you haven't checked out my Twitch yet, definitely go do that. Go follow. Uh, it's in the description as well as my Twitter and my Facebook page. So if you haven't done those yet, definitely go check them out. Anyway, uh, it's taking a while to get a battle. It's not late at all. Uh, I don't know why uh, it's taken so long. We have 100 plus battles, so I'm not even that high on the ladder. I'm like late 1600, mid 1600s actually. So, all right, we got one. And um, this guy's looking very, very weak to Pidgeot after I get rid of that Heatran. Like, it just kills everything. <laughs> Nothing switches into a hurricane anymore after that. Alright, so Keldeo's looking like I can put in some work. Uh, I definitely have a Venusaur problem. Did not see that before. Uh, I'm just going to lead off here with Keldeo, because it has the best lead matchup. Uh, as Weavile does actually lead, which is perfect. Now, I don't expect him to stay in, so I'm going to switch out into Rachi so that I can get up my rocks. Uh, I can fully see something like uh, Venusaur coming in here, which is why I'm doing this. Uh, Venusaur does resist any one of my attacks. As it does, beautiful, there it is, and now we get up our Stealth Rocks basically for free. I don't know if he's going to want to stay in on a potential Heart Stamp. Uh, he actually is just going to switch out into Garchomp. Now, one problem that this team has is no hazard removal other than Pidgeot, but I wasn't going to bring that to, uh, to OU, so... Uh, let's just switch out here, I think, into Whimsicott, because Whimsicott can go for, a, uh, for an Encore on this Garchomp. But I don't see him wanting to stay in anyway, so I'm actually just going to go for a U-turn. Like, it'd be... Unless he has, like, Poison Jab, I can't see him wanting to stay in. He does go into Venusaur. That's good. We're able to get a U-turn off on that thing. And now, now we reap our benefits. <laughs> we go for uh, for Hurricane right here. His only resist is um, he try and he actually chooses to go out into Garchomp on this. This is going to take a ton. Uh, yeah, it takes 58%, as you can see. Uh, now, I'm thinking that from that damage... Hold on. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is not Tank Chomp. Uh, let's see. Pidgeot. All that attacker. Uh, it actually, actually, if he doesn't have any HP investment, that would always do more. Like, no HP, no defense. Uh, that would always do... Why is it staying the same? Why am I not ever doing more? Okay, yeah, 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 no, that's good. Uh, so it does min 59% if he has no HP investment. So I'm going to go for another Hurricane here. He's going to switch out into Heatran. So he basically let his uh, Garchomp take a hit for no reason. And he risked a Confusion on his Heatran as well by uh, making that play. This is fine though. I'm actually just going to throw out another Hurricane because I'm not too concerned. Uh, even losing my Pidgeot is not the end of the world. He does just go for a Fire Blast and that is going to knock us out. Uh, now I said that it wasn't the end of the world. But now I'm kind of worried about the Venusaur to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, I am just going to trap this in, I think, with uh, with Magneton. Let's just see something. Heatran. Uh, offensive, because that seems to be what it is, with Fire Blast. Uh, against Magneton, Choice Scarf. I don't think I knock him out with a Thunderbolt, though. Oh, I do. Okay. Uh, it does exactly 41.1 to 48.6, so I could do that. You can also go Haxorus and just knock him out with an Earthquake, or even go Keldeo and just fire off the Scald. Yeah, Keldeo is actually my best play, because even if Venusaur comes in, it's not taking this well, that's first. It's already coming on rocks a couple of times, uh, so it's already weakened. And if I get a burn, then that thing becomes so much more manageable. Like, look how much damage this is actually going to do before the Mega Evolution. 27% and we get the burn. So, we have a chance to knock him out. I just want to see Mega Venusaur uh, defensive, because that's clearly what he is, uh, versus an all-out attacker. Keldeo, Skull does 30 to 36 against a defensive variant. So this Scald is probably knocking him out here. As no, it doesn't. It leaves him at 1% and he's gonna synthesis up, which is absolutely fine. We're going to switch out into uh, Jirachi right here. 
And uh, this Venusaur has to go for another Synth, basically. It doesn't have a choice. And it can switch back into my Scalds now, but the problem is I can switch it up for Hydro Pump at this point. So I am just going to go for the U-turn right here because I expect Heatran or Garchomp, I guess, to come back in, which is fine. We are going to take the Rocky Helmet and Rough, uh, rough Skin right here, Rough Skin, uh, and we're going to go out into Whimsicott, and this time I'm just going to throw out a Moonblast. His uh, Heatran is severely weakened at this point. It's at 41, it comes in at 29. I'm just going to have this Garchomp die right here, and uh, now Keldeo, like Keldeo just, oh my god, Keldeo destroys him. It's insane. So glad we got that burn there. Really gonna help us out after after needlessly losing Pidgeot. Well, I wouldn't say needlessly because I didn't really have a Fire Blast switch in. Like, that's something we Ethan's team is very weak to, uh, is uh, Fire Spam. He doesn't really have a response. Uh, Pillow Swine gets Thick Fat, but that's about it. It's still neutral. So, he brings in Weavile. This is clearly gonna get a kill right here. There's nothing I can really do about that. So, I'm just going to... No, there is something I can do about that. I'm going to go out into Magneton on this thing. He's going to go for the Icicle Crash. It's only going to do 41, and we are Choice Scarfed, so we outspeed this. Now, I don't know if he knows that. He might want to switch out here. Uh, I'm actually just going to go for the Volt Switch, as we are not going to be able to knock out Weavile right here. We're going to go into Whimsicott on his, uh, on his knockoff. We're going to lose our leftovers in the process. He's actually going to go for Low Kick, so that ends up working out for us. And I'm going to Encore him into Low Kick. Because I expect him to go for another Icicle Crash. There we go. He goes for Low Kick, and he's going to take the Life Orb hit. We forced him to take Life Orb damage, which was perfect. And the only thing that comes in and really takes advantage of my Whimsicott right now is this thing, <laughs> which is very uh, which is very scary. Uh, however, if he goes for a Swords Dance, then I can just Encore him in, and then he can't really do anything. So I'm going to go for Giga Drain. Uh, he is banded, uh, obviously. Uh, he's going to go for U-Turn. And uh, Magneton does outspeed this thanks to the Choice Scarf, so as soon as we trap this, it's pretty much over. Uh, I need to get Lando a little bit low, uh, for sure. He's going to go out into Heatran. This is fine. I can go out into Keldeo on this every single time. He knows that. He shouldn't have drawn in Keldeo. He should have probably gone into Venusaur right there. Uh, just a little a bit of uh, advice for everybody out there. Now, we saw Scald. I know that his Venusaur, I can't see it because of Showdown right now. As you can see, I can scroll over some things and see their health, but I can't see others. I, I think I can only see these two, which is really weird. Um, but I think he's at about 75%. So I just want to see how much Skull did to him before. I did 24, so with the rocks and with uh, burn damage, he's going to take 24, 12. He's max spit F, by the way, guys, just so you know. He is max spit F, <clears throat> and he has to be uh, a calm nature as well to have taken that Skull that well. And even that, that's a low roll skull that we got. It's a very, very low roll. Um, am I looking at Mega, Mega Venusaur? Yeah, I am. Why Why did that do so little? I'm choice specs, right? Yeah, 357. Like, I'm calcing max HP, max spadef Mega Venusaur right now, and it's supposed to do 25 minutes, and we did 24. That's really weird. Uh, I'm just going to throw out a skull. His Venusaur does come in. It's going to be really, really low after the skull and the burn. It's going to do 26% this time. And if we can get that same roll again... Because I'm pretty sure that 24 was an absolute minimum roll. And he's at about 25 right now. Uh, and we do get the roll. Perfect. So we are able to knock out the Venusaur right there. That was his last response to Keldeo. <clears throat> we just sweep with this monster now. Uh, and he's going to forfeit. Awesome. So let's move on to the next game. Hopefully it'll be a little bit quicker to find. And hopefully we can get this episode done uh, in about 15, 16 minutes. Get a, a quicker game. Maybe some hyper offense that Pidgeot destroys. That would be awesome. What I really like about Ethan's team, though, is that he has switches to everything. Like, you saw Weavile is not going to be a problem for him because he has the Whimsicott that he can switch into on anything but a nice move and just Encore it and lock it in. He has the uh, the Keldeo that he can switch in at any time as well. Doesn't really want to get it knocked off, but he has the Healing Wish from Jirachi if ever he needs to bring it back. It's really, really, like, everything works together. And this guy, oh my god, can you make a more Magneton weak team, please? Please, I beg you. Like, look at this. Three of his members just drop <laughs> to Magneton. It's insane. All right, so uh, I think the best course of action is to actually lead off with uh, Whimsicott. Because what Whimsicott does for me uh, against the Lopany, if he chooses to fake out, um, he's going to get Encored into fake out, and he's going to be forced to switch out. We're going to Encore him in now. I don't know if he's going to see this coming. 
Uh, he does see leftovers, so he... Okay, he switches out into Scizor, that's a good play. I can't see him going for Bullet Punch right here, because I do have a Magneton. So what I'm actually going to do is go for the U-turn, and switch on out. He's probably going to go for the U-turn as well, so I am just going to go Mag, just in case he clicks anything else. Just the U-turn, there we go, there it is. I can't let this thing get any lower though, I have to keep it at this amount of health. Landorus is going to come in, I'm assuming rocks are going up, I'm just going to... <laughs> that's what happens when you click on a Pokemon that's already in now? Alright, cool. Uh, gonna go into Kelio here. No reason not to. He's gonna go for the U-turn, uh, showing me that he's more than likely Scarfed. Lopany is gonna come back out to fake out again, I assume. Uh, so we will go right back out into Whimsicott this time. And uh, he goes for the high jump kick, which we cannot take two of, apparently. Which is very interesting. Um, not really. <laughs> That's That I was not expecting. He also just risked me being Scarfed Keldeo. So I'm a little surprised. Unless he's been watching my games. I'm going to Encore him in. Because uh, what this does for me is that it uh, it doesn't really do much. <laughs> because my entire team is weak to uh, High Jump Kick right now. I'm going to go into Jirachi though. And I'm going to get up rocks. Because they are quite important. If he thinks that this is Scarfed. Yeah, he's, he's wrong about that. Uh, we're going to go for the Stealth Rocks. Uh, I can totally see him going for a knockoff or a U-turn right here. So I'm going to go for my own U-turn. We're going to get some initiative off of this thing. Uh, he might just expect like an icy wind or something like that. He is going to go into Skarmory. This is awesome because this means that Keldeo essentially just gets a kill here. I might have wanted to go out into Magneton right there, but I do want to save it specifically for the Scizor. And I'd much rather get off damage on anything else that wants to come in. So Skarmory goes straight down. Lopany is still an issue though. Lopany is a huge issue. And it's not something that I can deal with effectively. So that's, uh, he, he does not want to play against Merc, man. <laughs> he does not want to play against Merc. Alright, so we do have a Spadef Rachi, so we're going to go straight out into it. He's going to go for the T-Bolt. It's only going to do 35%. That's absolutely fine. And uh, we're going to click U-Turn here because we do have a Scarfed Magneton in the back. Uh, we're going to get off some nice damage with a crit right there. Uh, what do I it's outspeed on his team? Absolutely nothing. He's Scarfed. He has banded this, uh, so I don't outspeed anything. So this is essentially a sack now. Uh, now, he's Life Orb, which means he has Thunder Wave on deck, so we have to go into Magneton. I don't expect him to switch out, necessarily, into Landorus. And going into Landorus doesn't gain him anything, because I just sack Rachi in the process. So I am just going to go for Volt Switch. He is going to let his Thunderous go down, which is awesome. Uh, we are Choice Scarfed. Unfortunately, we do not outspeed the Lopany. I'm going to have to figure out some way to deal with that thing. And fast. Uh, we're gonna go on into Keldeo. Basically, I just want to keep out the Landorus right now. I want to force him into Lopany. As it does come in, cool. So this is where we're gonna sack off Jirachi. And uh, I have to see if... Uh, he's gonna go for return, clearly. Um, if anything on my team can actually take this. So let's see Pidgeot. Mega Pidgeot versus Lopany. All out attacker. Wait, he is in the same group as Merc. What are you gonna come up with to deal with this, dude? I'm really curious now. <laughs> Alright, anyway. Uh, High Jump Kick does 85 to 100 to Pidgeot. So, that's 187 defense. No, that's 197. Why am I so low on defense? Okay, because I haven't Mega Evolved yet. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, so, that's the best thing I have to take it. So I'm going to go out into it now. I had to run the Calc. Uh, nothing on his team wants to take two of these, so we're just going to go for it. We're going to go for a Hurricane. He needs an absolute max roll. Uh, he's actually going to go for Ice Punch and not get the Freeze, so we are able to knock out the Lopany. Whew! All right. Scizor is going to come in here. It's going to go for Bullet Punch, and I don't really think I need this anymore. So I'm just going to go for another Hurricane. He's going to go for the Bullet Punch, but as a result, Magneton is now going to come in and click Hidden Power Fire. He's going to sack off his Scizor. Uh, this is easily going to knock it out because it's banded. And Landorus is actually going to be the switch in here. And what I'm going to do is just go for another Hidden Power. He confirms to be Scarfed. Now I'm going to go into Kelio, and I'm going to click Secret Sword. Uh, as he actually stays in to Earthquake me. Uh, and okay, this isn't too bad, and I'll tell you why. Because basically if he stays in to Earthquake me here, I get up a free DD no matter what. So now he has to choose whether he stays in 
lets me go for the Outrage and potentially knock out his Manaphy. I'm not sure if this knocks it out or not. I'm gonna check. Haxorus, uh, Dragon Dance, Adamant, Life Orb to a Manaphy. Manaphy, OU. Uh, actually, if he's Jolly, he still outspeeds me, by the way, guys. <laughs> I'm just checking this. Outrage does 89, so after Rocks, it's dead. Let's go for Outrage. He's still faster. He's Jolly, so that's gonna knock us out. I'm surprised that a Jolly Earthquake did 74%. That's insane. Alright, well anyway, that's gonna wrap it up. That was a quicker game. Uh, I kinda choked there at the end, I'm not gonna lie. I sh probably should've just gone for the Surf. Uh, the Scald, I mean. But then his Manaphy just got a f free, tail glow, uh, free Tail Glow at that point. So my only hope was that he was adamant and uh, that I was able to uh, outspeed him after the Dragon Dance. Is Haxorus max speed? Yeah, it is, okay. So, this is still a really cool team, guys. Obviously, Whimsicott and Magneton bring it down a little bit in terms of tiering. Uh, but everything else, like, look at this. Mega Pidgeot, Haxorus. This is easily a, a Mon that can have its, a spot in OU because of its insane wall-breaking power. Um, Keldeo and uh, Jirachi. Like, this is all OU. This is all OU BL uh, Pokemon that deserve to be OU. Magneton is essentially Magnezone. Like, Ethan's team is ridiculous. This is such a fun team to use. But anyway, guys, that's going to wrap it up. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check me out on Twitch, Facebook, and Twitter. And I will catch you guys later. Ciao.